you. Just hold on, all right? So I was really looking forward to this one, but had no idea what to expect. So let's go ahead and get into it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for traffic. I really do appreciate it. Now, like I said, I was looking forward to this movie. Uh, didn't know what to expect. It's being written and directed by Mr. Dion Taylor. I'm not too familiar with this work. Um, in 2016, um, he did Meet the Blacks with Mike Epps. Uh, it's on Netflix right now if you want to go check that out. I did want to go see that when it was in theaters, but didn't have time and still that it's on Netflix right now. Um, I haven't got to it, but uh, he's done a lot of short films, a lot of TV, and I'm just not familiar with his work. Um, this stars Paula Patton. I'm a big fan of hers. Also, Omar Epps, uh, Rosalind Sanchez. She was it like when I saw her in this movie, I was like, oh, my gosh, where was she from? And I was like, you know, it dawned on me. She was in uh, Rush Hour 2, one of the uh, I think one of the FBI agents or one of the agents. She was the beautiful woman that Christopher Tucker, Chris, uh, Chris, I said Christopher Tucker, that Chris Tucker was drooling over. And we also have La, uh, La, Laz Alonzo in here. Um, this is actually the third collaboration between Laz Alonzo and Paula Patton. They were in Jump the Broom together just right. And now they are both in uh, traffic. And on my apps, of course, you know him from Higher Learning and Love and Basketball with Sanaa Lathan. So we have a fine cast. There are four main characters. Uh, I am a fan of all of them. And for the most part in this movie, they did do a good job. Now, the plot of this movie is... Um, Omar Epps character, his name is John, and he's his girlfriend is Paula Patton's character, Bria. Bria is a lawyer uh, from Sacramento. I think yeah, it, it was Sacramento. Uh, she's very passionate. She just doesn't like to write a story, um, you know, just for hits. You know, everything that she puts on paper or online um, is something that she feels deeply passionate about. And she's always she just doesn't want to, like I just said, get the hit. She wants to like solve a problem or fix something or solve a mystery. But John and Bria are boyfriend and girlfriend. They're in love. And John, um, you know, he really does love her. He cares for her, you know, but he has to tread softly because he knows that Bria has been hurt in the past and she doesn't want to be hurt again. She expresses that a number of times throughout the film. And they just want to. Well, he wants to have a romantic getaway. And so they go off into the countryside or the mountainside to um, a home that Laz Alonzo is associated with. His character's name is Darren Cole. Um, he's like, uh, I think some type of sports agent or something like that. And, um, what is her name? Malia Rosalind Sanchez character. That's, uh, that's his lady friend. That's his girlfriend of their dating. So, you know, they have this house, they go off and they run into these biker gang, uh, th this uh, group of gang members in a biking gang. And, you know, that's where trouble ensues. And so, you know, uh, as everything is building up, as you're getting to know the characters, you know, you're on board, you're liking how everything is flowing. Um, but at the same time, with within the relationship between John and Bria, I just wasn't buying it. There was not much chemistry in between their relationship, you know, early on. And so, you know, when they're doing their little lovey dovey scenes and expressing how much they feel about each other, you know, I was just kind of like, you know, huh, you know, OK. You know, whatever. Let's get to the, you know, the goody goody stuff. So and it does get there kind of quick. I do like that. Um, but before I stay there, I was just talking about their chemistry later on in the film. Not even much later when they are um, at the house, um, not even because they're in a conflict. I did start to um, see the chemistry in their relationship. I did start to feel the passion and the love that they have for each other. I don't know if it was because Paula Patton was in the bikini in the swimming pool looking also beautiful, um, but that may have been it. But at, around that time is where everything, uh, you know, came into fruition. We got a nice soundtrack coming in the background that intensified everything right there. And I guess I'm talking to you. Let me see if I can see who, who the soundtrack is by real quick, because it was uh, it, it was quite it was done quite well. And I can't find it. I don't want to waste any time. But, you know, the soundtrack, uh, you know, through a number of points in this film did uh, elevate a number of the scenes for me. Um, now, initially, let's get to my likes and dislikes. Uh, initially in the film, I was not liking Paula Patton's acting like the first scene of the film. Um, I just it just didn't match uh, what her co-actor in that scene was doing. William Fickner, her boss, she was just giving a little more passion than he was. And there was this little misbalancing right there. But I don't want to spoil anything for you because there are some reveals in this movie that I don't think is in the trailers. And this is also based on true events, not necessarily a true story, but some things that happen in this movie uh, do happen in real life. 
um, that has to. Then I, I, I'll tell you what. There will be spoilers uh, for this movie at the end of the credits at the very end. So if you haven't seen it, you know, I've taken care of you there. Um, I won't spoil anything for you. But if you have seen it and you don't care, that will be towards the um, the end of the video. Uh, but I like Paula. Pa I like Paula Patton's character in this movie for the most part. Um, there were times to where she had to make decisions um, in the uh, critical decisions at, at the last moment. Some of the decisions I liked, some of them I hated. And I was just like, what are you doing, woman? No, that is stupid. You know, I didn't scream at the screen, but I kind of wanted to. But at the same time, I like Paula Patton's character because whether she and, you know, her boyfriend, John, are, you know, rough, uh, you know, wrestling and tussling around with bad guys that are trying to kill them, you know, with this biker gang, she's not just a damsel in distress that would just sit in the corner screaming, ah, ah, you know, help, 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 you know, while her boyfriend is just throwing blows, picking up chairs, throwing knives, guns, and all that good stuff. You know, she will actually get into the fight or whatever, you know, like, you know, if he's holding them up, like, get him, baby, she will, you know, go grab a stick and just... You know, beat the hell out of him in the, in the back and the head, get a knife or something like that. And she did that a number of times in this movie. So I'm like, okay, yeah, you go, girl. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's what's up. Uh, on my Epps, I really like his character. He is a he is, he is a protector. Um, you know, he's just not going to take no crap. You know, if I put myself in the situation that he was in in this movie, I would, you know, maybe I would have done a little something different here and there. But there was one point early on. I was like, okay, on my Epps is not no punk. You know, he's going to try to avoid confrontation um, as much as possible. But at the same time, when you cross over a certain line, you know, he will deal with you. Um, Rosalind's character, not much to her. Um, she had the least amount of screen time in this movie, but I did like her. But Lonzo, Lonzo's character, Darren Cole, I just despise him. He was just a complete asshole in this movie. I don't know what his problem was. You know, he has some insecurities that didn't just come out on the forefront, but I can tell myself just kind of reading in between the lines. And I like the way that the filmmaker, or what's his name, uh, Dion Taylor did that. You know, they did, he didn't tell us the problems that um, Dion, Darren Cole's character, Lonzo Lozo's character had. You know, he showed it. So, you know, I really, I really do like that. So, uh, but getting to the plot of the film, again, I, don't, I mean, I was about to get into it, but I, I really don't want to spoil anything for you. But, you know, this movie was a mixed bag for me because uh, shout out to the pay, uh, Miss, uh, I, I forgot, I'm so Miss Williams at Pale, Pale Weight. You know, I saw your thumbnail for this movie and I was like, oh my gosh, it's not going to be that good. But then when I was watching it, I was saying to myself, okay, this movie is not that bad. And then, okay, the plot is getting thicker. We have this Brock gang here now and they seem like a, a, a very worthy threat. Somebody that you don't want to cross, somebody that you don't want to mess with. You know, so we had that plot line going on right here. But then you had this other plot line going over here that was just quite as interesting that didn't match with this one over here. So you're like, OK, wow. You know, I wonder how these two plot lines are going to come together. And when they finally did, it wasn't a good mixture. It was kind of just kind of forced together a little too coincidental for me. But at the same time, you know, it, it is uh, passable. There's some still like a little plot hole here and there that I'm just kind of like scratching my head. Like, OK, that really just doesn't make sense. And when things really do get to the nitty gritty, back to what I was talking about, Paula, Paula Patton's character, uh, Bria, I'm just like, OK, you go, girl, at some points. And I'm just like, OK, this is stupid as hell. Why are you doing this? I mean, there's just other points as well in this movie to where. You know, it, I like where the film was going and what they were doing with the plot, but it was very rough over the edges. Like, OK, they could have cleaned this up or just, you know, get, I mean, if somebody just comes to your help, OK, hey, we need your help. These people are after us. You know, you're going to have some people in the world that's going to be like, uh, no, I don't want to be involved. Get out of here. But you're going to have some nice people that just have a big heart. OK, come on in. But when that happens, you're going to be asking questions like, OK, who is after you? Like, how far away are they? You know, are they dead people? You know, how serious is the situation? You know, you're just not going to go let them in and then go back on your uh, couch and press play on your DVR and eat Cheetos like nothing is going on. So, I mean, like little things like that. I was just like, I mean, like, why didn't y'all, you know, take care of this? You know, um, but just moving on, guys. I mean, there were a lot, a lot of surprising moments in this movie. They, there were a number of twists, not a lot, but some twists in this movie to where I just did not see coming at all. So I was just like, oh, snap. I, I knew where the movie was going and I saw it going there. But nope, it's going this way now. And oh, we're going this way now. And I'm just like, man. And that was at some point into this movie. So I was watching it. And I was like, wow, 
is it really going to end like this? Are the bad guys really going to win or are the good guys going to win? I mean, I was just so conflicted and confused and I just did not know how this movie was going to end. Um, there were just, uh, like I said, some surprises here and there, twists and turns, not like a big twist, you know, but some edgier seat moments to where you're just like, oh my gosh, you know, what's going to happen? You know, so um, I liked the film. I, I enjoyed it. I was entertained, but there were a number of character points that made me happy, but also some that just really frustrated the hell out of me and just like a little plot hole here and there. But I mean, I was entertained by it. Um, if you want to go see it, you know, don't, I wouldn't go, uh, rush to go see it. Um, yeah, you don't have to go rush to go see it. I did enjoy it. You know, I mean, if, if you was already interested in going to go see it, go see it. But if you wasn't sure, um, you know, go on a discount day or something like that. If I had to rate traffic out of a one out of 10, um, I will give this movie a six out of 10. Yes. A six out of 10 and that is the uh lowest passing grade that i can give i, I was like you know with this movie is it, i was thinking like a seven then it dropped down to a three and i was like okay four i don't know okay it's getting better 5.5 5. and then you know i was like okay maybe 6.57 then they do some more back, back down to six so i'm going to leave this movie at a six like i said it's based on true events uh paula Patton is also a producer of this film and I kind of feel I, I was trying to do a little research on it. I couldn't find it. But I, I just kind of feel that this is like a really a passion project for her because she did pr produce it. This is a very serious issue that it has to deal with. Um, and they did put that on the forefront. But guys, that is just my opinion of traffic. What did you think or have you seen it or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also go to my website, check me out there, bookmark it, and also look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. And I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Traffic, written and directed by Dion Taylor Stone, Paula Patton, Omar Epps, Rosalind Sanchez, and Laz Alonzo, and William Fickner. If you want spoilers, stay till after the credits. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace. All right, guys, thank you so much for staying with me. I really do appreciate it. And now if you watch the next section of the video, this is where I will contain spoilers for the film Traffic. Spoilers up, down, left, right, in and out as if you've already seen the movie. So if you haven't seen Traffic, if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, I strongly suggest you turn the video off now. So the film tra or the title of the film is Traffic and what that has to do with human uh, sex trafficking. The biker gang is not just some thugs that just want to bully people. They're much more than that. They're on the front line of abducting women, uh, of course, behind the scenes and, uh, you know, shipping them around the country, around the world for uh, sex trafficking. The reason why this is based on the true, they says it's based on the true event because this type of thing does go on. It said of the film that it is estimated that 1.9 million women in this country fall victim to sex trafficking. And around, I think around 21 million worldwide, uh, equaling up to about 100 and fifty billion dollars in legal in illegal uh, profits, which is horrible. Uh, one of the twists in this movie was the cop, the woman cop that you were you thought was a good guy at the very beginning of the film, and they did play that on very well. She was actually um, a sheriff, and she was actually behind the sex trafficking too. But one of the plot holes for me in this movie was um, they. I wish I, I wish they would have did a flashback or something to where they showed the uh, woman put the satellite phone in Paula Patton's bag. And why she would do that in the first place just doesn't make sense to me. Now, she put the phone in the bag um, because she was in danger. Well, she was in danger or she wanted to get rescued. That would make perfect sense. I would be on board with that. But when she showed up to the house, that's what she wasn't asking for help. She was just trying to get the phone back. And she was still working with the men, the sex trafficking men, because she's like, baby, I can get the phone and da 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 da. 
So that scene right there told me that you're still working with them. So why would you put the phone in the bag in the first place if you were just trying to get it back? I mean, I don't understand that. I mean, if you, you know, if y'all was doing it because you wanted to abduct Paula Patton and her other and her other girlfriend, her friend, you know, y'all could have just kicked the door in or something like that. You didn't have to go to the front of the house and pretend like you was trying to get the phone back. I mean, you don't have to just do that whole charade. So I really just didn't understand that there. Uh, but that was the only plot hole. But guys, um, again, thank you for tuning in. And um, I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.